I'll show you that size isn't everything. Is that an adult joke? This game has serious content warnings. Welcome back to Amori. Last time we played, we learned a little more about the relationships that Sunny has with everybody. I think we did some English homework. Which one of these sentences is written correctly? Oh my gosh, am I doing like SATs again? We knocked on some doors. We've done a lot of errandy type stuff. And now we're gonna go back to the supermarket to look for Aubrey. No, 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 to look for Aubrey's friends. Something with Aubrey. Do we have any trash? <laughs> what an interesting way to make money. Four bucks. Do you have anything else? Anything new? Oh, you look like you're hurt. Here's a bandage. You can get more at the pharmacy and other mart. Nice. I... <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Hmm. So wait, do the recycling guys say anything else? Followers of the holy bin. <sighs> okay, but nothing new. All right, to the supermarket. So run into a tree. It's really hard with this whole like new area and new world to know what is new. Uh, like, what is a side questy type thing, and what is something I should explore, and what is something I shouldn't? There's nobody manning the shop. Oh, yes, there is. The owner is in the top right. Hmm. Knowing Kim and Mance, they're probably somewhere around here. I can see them. That is so much candy. Oh, hey, there she is. Hurry. Oh, I couldn't tell if she was blushing or glasses. It's glasses. Hurry, Vance. Let's shove it all in our pockets before someone sees us. You're fucking stealing? Hey, Kim, have you seen Aubrey anywhere? Shoot, it's that nerd, Kel. Come on, Vance, we gotta go. Dude, this is the wrong, like, the worst shop to steal from. That owner is intense. <sighs> Whoa, hold on there. I don't think you paid for those. Get out of the way, nerd. You don't know me. Hey, hey, hold on. I'm not here to snitch. We just need to find Aubrey. You know where she is? I would bet money that Kel is gonna be like, if you don't tell me, I'll snitch. Huh? Aubrey? I don't know anything about that. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. <sighs> I've had enough of this for today. Also, as a side note, I've been thinking of these guys as kids because of the other world and just in general for so long that it is very unsettling to see Van Vance, fam, with facial hair. I am seeing that right, right? It's weird. Because mentally, I see it as- Anyways, I see him as a kid. Okay, I've had enough of this for today. Kim, let's make a deal. You tell me where Aubrey is, and I won't turn you in for stealing all that candy. I knew it. I thought you said you weren't a snitch. Oh, the owner's like, Did I hear something over here? And I don't need- and I don't need to be... Oh, oh, gotcha. And I don't need to be a snitch, basically. And I don't need to be if you just tell me where Aubrey is. Like, I won't need to tell if you just, you know, do what I'm asking. You two again? I thought I told you to never come back here, smiley, smiley. Uh-oh. Hand over the stolen candy. Don't make me call the cops on you, kids. Smiley, smiley. We've been busted. Fine. Choose your stupid candy. It was so stupid. Why are you stealing it? Like, you obviously wanted it. Come on, Vance. Let's get out of this dump. Oh, is that why Vance had candy stuck to their back? Or Van? Haha, <laughs> serves you right. Wait. <laughs> we find out where Aubrey is now. <laughs> the look on his face. <laughs> Come on, Sunny, let's follow them. Hi. Hold up one sec, Sunny. I think I have an idea. Are we gonna follow them? Sorry, 
for the hold up. Let's go catch up to Kim and Vance. I thought you were broke, Kel. Why did, what did you buy? Are you gonna bribe them with candy? Grumble, grumble. Sorry, Vance. No candy today. No, not again. I don't know how much longer I can last. We're gonna tie? Let's just go home. You're gonna die without candy? We're gonna be late for dinner. The only way I would think of that being a thing would be if you're diabetic. And if you're diabetic, candy is probably not what you're looking for in that case. Wait, Kim, I have something for you. Candy. You again, Kel. What the heck do you want, you bully? There's this pattern where all of these people who are actually part of this, like, bullying gang are calling everybody else bullies. Like, they are making themselves the victim and blaming everybody else. It's happened, like, what, three or four times now? At least. And then there's also this interesting situation where they refuse to say something. They've created this group, this, this uh, whatever. And they refuse to tell anybody where Aubrey is. So they're a very, like, close-knit group, even though they don't have the best intentions. But in a way, when they call Kel a bully... They're not entirely wrong. Because Kel is making some not so great choices in order to get them to talk. So it becomes this cycle where they start off bullying and then Kel starts bullying and then they use it to justify more bullying. Oh, it's not great for anybody. Tell us where Aubrey is and I will give you this whole big bag of candy. Really? The whole bag? <laughs> I mean, wait. You can't, you can't just buy us off with candy. I like how I was just saying, oh, they're so close-knit. And then it's like, well, but will you betray your friend for candy? Who do you take us for? I don't know, Kim. We haven't had candy for an entire week. That's a long time. And there's this whole bag right in front of us. We don't even have to pay for it. Can you at least ask if he has any taffy in there? Just, like, ask about the kind of candy. Just, because if there's the right kind of candy, maybe we are willing to give up our friend. Stop it, Vance. We have to stay strong. When we go to Dad's house, we'll be able to have all the candy we want. Oh. Okay. I'll do it for you, sis. Kim. Vance. I'm waiting. <laughs> Like we'd accept candy from a bunch of nerds. Does that matter where it comes from at that point? Ants didn't care. Aw oh, man, really? I was sure that would work. I'm waiting for Kel to do the thing where you like open up the candy and start eating it in front of them and going, Oh, it tastes so good. Don't you wish you had some? I feel like that would work. This is a waste of time. Let's get out of here. Don't you want candy though? Wait! Please, Kim. You're the only lead we've got. Please take the big peck of candy. Please betray your friend for sugar. We we even have Taffy in here. Is that true, Kel? Did someone say Taffy? Is that like a password? I see. It changes everything. This is like battle music. Fine. You really want to know that badly, huh? Let's settle this with our fists. If you win, I'll tell you where Aubrey is. But if we win, you give us that big bag of taffy and never talk to us ever again. Wait a second, there's no need to fight. If you just tell me where she is, I'll give you this whole bag. But I want to fight. Come on, put him up, you two. It's time to duke it out. It's like when someone's like, let me at him, let me at him. What's with you guys in fighting? <laughs> Kel's face. I think Kel's more expressive in the real world. I guess we have no choice. Come on, Sunny. You know the drill. I'll show you that size isn't everything. Is that an adult joke? I'm not about to lose to nerds like you. I think it's interesting that the nerd stereotype is like glasses and all that other stuff, and it's Burly. Uh, Kim saying that. 
like, oh, nerd this, nerd that, right? <laughs> so, Vance has candy sticking out of his pocket. <laughs> uh. Do we have to actually fight both of them, or can we just focus on Kim? Girl! Your face annoys me. Wow. Okay. Everybody always focuses on Cal. And it makes me wonder if it's because Cal is the one doing more of the bullying type things. Like, Cal is the only one talking. And that's hard to tell if that's literally a thing or if that's just the video game representation. We have the meme of, like, the silent protagonist. So it's hard to tell if they're attacking Cal more because they know him more, because he's out and about more and forms more relationships with people. Or if they're attacking because of the bullying, right? Like, Cal's, Cal's poking a bear, so of course. But I find it interesting that nobody has attacked Sunny. That I can remember. You're still nerds. <laughs> okay. Did we just, like, a attack someone to the point where they're just laying on the ground now? <sighs> Man. Alright, well, you attack and you heal. Jeez, I need more bandages already in first aid. I think I pick up trash for money. Oh, and everybody makes Kel feel sad or angry or something. Is this a fight I shouldn't have picked? Ouch, that hurts. Oh yeah, that's right, Kel's getting all these juice. He's sad. Dang, all I wanted was some taffy. Cause none of these people really strike me as super happy. I can't believe we lost. You can never let Aubrey know about this. Church? Come on, Kim. We gotta go home. It's almost time for dinner. Mom's gonna be really mad if we're late. Shoot, let's get out of here. I don't think I've ever heard bells like that. Where do you think you're going? We won, so you need to tell us where Aubrey is. Probably at fucking church. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aubrey's at the church. I knew it. Called it. The one near her house. Huh? Aubrey's at church? I called that. I called that ages ago. Hey, don't look at me. You're the one who wanted to know. Also, if she asks who told you, tell her it wasn't me. Say it was Michael or something. So you're not only saying where Aubrey is, you're like, oh, but, you know, say someone else betrayed her. <laughs> like, I said before that they were such a close-knit group. Uh, about that. Maybe they're not. Come on, Kim, we gotta scoop. You know how mom gets when we're late. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. Let's go. Some hell you later, nerds. I mean, nerds rule the world. Bill Gates is how much money? Ah, nuts. They took the big bag of candy while I wasn't looking. Those two have got some sticky fingers. Oh, well, at least we know where Aubrey is now. Or at least I think we do. I can't really imagine Aubrey at church, but I'll believe it when I see it. In the church? Oh. Well, here we are. This really is the last place I would expect her, which is probably why she's there. Her bike being there, though, is kind of an indicator. I'm kind of skeptical, actually. It might be a trap. I'll open the door a little to take a peek. You did that earlier. Hmm, looks normal to me. I think they're in the middle of a sermon. Oh, there's... <laughs> oh, there she is on the right. Hmm, she's just sitting there. All normal. So weird. Yeah, I'd feel pretty bad about interrupting this. We should probably wait until the sermon is over or something. Probably. Will there be an indicator that that happened? Or do we just literally wait? Do we ever go into the cemetery? I already 
did all the errands that I know of. Oh, okay, we, we do literally just wait here. Statue of religious figure, you feel as if it's judging you. Yes, let's go into the church because she's a, I'm not just gonna sit out here the whole time. And time isn't passing, and oh, I'm going in alone. Cacal just runs in. Whoa, I didn't expect you to just walk in like that, Sonny. Well, there's no turning back now. Come on, we have to be really quiet. Yeah, it would be hard to miss her pink hair. Oh, those kids! At the top left, those are the kids that we saw walking down the street before. They were probably walking to the church, but... There she is on the right. Let's walk up to the pew behind her. This is not the kind of music I expect. Or at church. Aubrey. Psst. Aubrey. It's not very incognito and quiet. What the? The heck are you guys doing here? We want to. We want you to give back Basil's photo album. You're still on about that? That's none of your business. Are there pictures in there that were taken of her that were not great? Really? None of my business? We all used to be best friends, but now this is none of my business? Yeah, Kel. Exactly. We used to be friends. Sounds like Veronica Mars' opening song. You know, Mari would be really sad to hear that. Huh. Really? You really want to bring Mari into this? Who cares what Mari thinks? Mari's dead. The fuck? Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Mari opened the door the other day. Unless that wasn't real. Aubrey, seriously? What's wrong with you? That's Sunny's sister, though. And there's nothing from Sunny right now? I get that you have new friends right now, but you can't just forget your old friends like that. My old friends? My old friends weren't there for me when I needed them. So what happened with this friend group? Because she feels betrayed about something that happened in the past. Mari's gone. So that's what this is all about. That when Mari passed on, we were all dealing with our own stuff. We were kids. It was hard. You think it's all so simple? You've always been simple, Kel. So what if I am? I'd rather be simple than be like you. You are trying to get her to help you. Maybe throwing insults her way is not the way to get her to help you. Sweet for thought, Cal. How could you do that to Basil? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Mari, in the past, something happened in the friend group, so Aubrey feels betrayed. Mari died. And then Aubrey was a jerk to Basil? And there's something with Basil... And Sunny, because they keep having these, there are these cutscenes with the two of them talking. Because if I were to guess that anybody was dead, I would have guessed Basil based off of those cutscenes. Those cutscenes are set up like with the black and white. And how they always show up in the white, or somehow connected with the white room. I would have connect, or I would have guessed that it was flashback type things. That's how it feels. It feels like a flashback. And if it's a flashback, I would have guessed that Basil would be dead if anybody was, not Mari. You know how important his photo album is to him. Oh, okay, so Kel is basically saying that the terrible thing that Aubrey did that we're currently talking about, not saying that there aren't other things in the past, is the fact that she took the photo album. It's important to all of us. That doesn't mean you can just steal it. One big difference, I feel, between playing a game like this and the actual work that I do is that I can actually ask my clients questions like, oh, what happened in the past? How do you feel about that? And 
with a video game, I'm solely relying on the information that they give me. It's a very different experience in that way. Is that what Basil told you? Aubrey seems like she's like lawful. Like she only does something if something was done to her first. I'm the one keeping it safe. From who? What are you talking about? That photo album belongs to Basil, and I'm not leaving until you agree to give it back. So is she saying that Basil gave it to her, like, to keep it safe? But if that's the case, why would Basil have asked us to get it back? Why not, wouldn't Basil just go up to Aubrey and say, hey, can I please have it back now? You're so persistent. When Mari died, you moved on so fast. Everybody deals with grief differently, and that is no wrong way to deal with it. You know why I come here every week. Even after all this time, I'm still trying to find some peace. But it doesn't look like that's happening today. We haven't talked in four years, Cal. Whew, so they live in the same town. And this terrible thing happened. And it just broke up their friend group instantly. And they just don't talk. Like, they see each other on the streets. And they don't look at each other. They don't talk. That's a lot. A lot changes in four years. You and Sunny think you can just barge back into my life and tell me what to do. Don't be so naive. Also, how loud are you talking? Because you are, like, in the middle of church right now. <laughs> You might look different and act differently, Aubrey, but you're still the same person. The Aubrey you know is long gone. And that Aubrey that was your friend, she's long gone too. Is that one reason why Sunny created this alternate world? To keep the memories of his friends as they were alive? At, like, as they were when they were his friends versus how they are now. Okay, fine. I get that you're angry. Look, if it's an apology you want here, I'm sorry, okay? I should have been there for you when we lost Mari. No. I was gonna say, I mean, does that feel like the most authentic apology? I won't accept this. Because it's only like he's apologizing because he wants something. Now everybody is looking at you. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I can't let you go until you promise me you'll give Basil his photo album back, you thief. So, like, this is a place that Aubrey has gone to for her own personal sanctuary. Like, she is trying to heal through her own trauma through faith. And Kel comes in, barges into her safe space. Now it's not safe anymore. And not only that, but, like, maybe she knows all these people who are, like, in church with her. And so it's almost like not only making the place unsafe, but potentially impacting all the relationships that she would have with all the people there, too. So are those relationships that, that she felt was helping her, are they safe now? What's happening? Who's talking? Basil. Isn't that the boy who? I've seen Aubrey and her friends bully. Now she's stealing as well. Oh, oh, it's like the crowd. Oops. Yeah, this is not fucking helping. helping. Like, she is not going to do anything for you now, Kel. You think you're the good guy, don't you, Kel? And I'm the big bad bully. Here to terrorize poor defenseless Basil. You're the one hanging out with a psychopath who carries around a knife. Psychopath. Probably not the best word. That has a lot of stigma. Now is not the time to do this, Aubrey. Says the person who barged into church to talk to her. Technically, I did a part of that the game wasn't advancing otherwise so i'm saying it's kel you don't get to say that she looks like she's about to cry you're the one who barged in here yeah nobody in this is completely innocent everybody has this weird little part to play 
I already said I was sorry for everything. You whip out your baseball bat in church. If you want me to be a bully, then I'll be a bully. You two better come at me quick or I'll come at you first. In church. <sighs> Kel starts off angry. But like, sometimes we get to that point where we've just been labeled something again and again and again and again and again and we've tried to tell people that it's not true again and again and again and again and again and there's a certain point where it's like, fine! You're calling me this thing. I'll just lean into it. And it really sucks too because if only we listened to people, that probably wouldn't happen. It really wouldn't happen as much. But it's like we form our preconceived notions of people and who they are and what they do and what that means. And then we judge other people. Look at her clothing. It is completely inappropriate for church. So, I mean, even now, this is people judging her for what she's wearing. This used to be a safe place for her, but it's not anymore. Why are you here? I can't believe she would bring a weapon in here. Un how uncivilized. At this point, Kel should really just just constantly heal. Like, he's just tanking it. He doesn't have the HP to be a tank. <laughs> Actually, no, he does have 40 more HP. What do these delinquents think they're doing? This is a place of worship. So she is never going to be allowed to go back into this church, and this is what she was doing to heal. I mean, no wonder she's pissed. Someone needs to stop them. Where are their parents? Oh, doesn't Amori have calmed down? Can he use that on someone else? Eh, I have all the bandages. That girl is a threat to this neighborhood. There is no hope for sinners like her. Oh, jeez. All of those words have so much weight to them. Saying there's no hope, that's... When we hear something like that, it instantly is like, why should we not try anymore, right? But not only that, the word sinners has a lot of weight behind it, too. Ah, <sighs> uh, what are your skills? Calm down. I kind of don't want to remove Kel's emotion, though. Um, I can do another attack. Why? Why now? I always thought she would be trouble. The pastor should have kicked her out a long time ago. Like, she lost her friends, she lost her safe place. Where else do you go? We don't know what home life is, like... Forget it, you two aren't worth my time. Ah, ever since her father left, she's so uncontrollable. Disrespectful. I feel bad for her mother. So, Aubrey doesn't have a home that is, like, this safe place. Church was that safe place that's taken from her now. The friends that she had before that she she chose, all of that got ruined. <sighs> I feel really bad for her. Shoot. I know she's been kind of messed up lately, but I still feel sorry for her. Maybe this was a bad idea. Yeah. I still am curious why those kids are up there. <laughs> hey, bastard! A twin. Our family comes to church once a week. When they have it all wavy like that, it makes it all sound all sing-songy. Sometimes twice, sometimes thrice. Jeez. Ha. Hmm. Like... Chekhov's gun's principle there. What was the point in having them watch it? I usually wouldn't condone fighting in the middle of a sermon, but that seemed really important. 
That girl, Aubrey, has come here every week for the past few years, but she never talks to anyone. I tried to approach her a few times, but she keeps calling me, uh, bad things. She seems very troubled. Perhaps she could use a friend. So everyone in the church is judging her and saying, like, why wouldn't the pastor kick her out? The pastor wouldn't kick her out because she needs it. Like, she needs that place. Regardless of what you think about religion or spirituality, it can fill that role for a lot of people. Oh, so this is the evening, so this is the end of our first day. So we have two more days. This is all like relaxing, happy music, like it's the kind of music you have at the end of your journey type of thing. It doesn't feel very satisfying right now. I do like the color change that they have to show that it's sunset. Oh, that's Aubrey's home. Hi, Aubrey. Did you see that? Aubrey just dumped something into her trash can. Let's go check it out. Probably the photo album. Big bag of trash. Really? You're just diving in there? Whoa, I don't believe it! It's Basil's photo album! I can't believe she would just throw it out like that. It's a good thing we looked through this trash can. Yeah, but what? So now I'm like, what's in the photo album? But on the right side, at least we can have Basil's photo album now, and it only took us half a day, too! Talk about teamwork. How about a high five, Sonny? Do you want a high five, Cal? No. All of this is horrible. High fiving Cal feels like I am saying good job for everything that happened before it. Sorry, Cal. Let's get this back to Basil before it gets dark. He'll be so happy when he sees it. Can I look at it? Pocket. Important. What do I do? Use. These are different pictures. Read. Read? I didn't do this before in the other world. My first photo. It's my best friend Sonny trying out his new violin. So yeah, Sonny plays violin. He's starting to take lessons again so he can play at recitals with Sister Mari. So exciting. Sad. Wait, pictures are missing. Huh. Are they what we've been finding? The familiar photos? Just Cal being Cal. Yep, that, that tracks. So, many party hats. Sunny, playing a video game on the couch. Sunny's a little shy, but he's a really good listener. I always end up venting to him when I get upset or stressed. Sometimes I feel like I'm bothering him, but he never seems to mind. Sometimes we feel that way, like we're bothering other people by talking to them. But if these people care about us, if these people really are friends, it's not bothering them. Or if they aren't at a good place emotionally to listen, they'll tell us. Everybody out there has worth and value, and it's never a bother. We're back from the park, but Kel is still full of energy. Yeah, that sounds about right. He challenged Hero to an arm wrestling match, but we all know who's going to win. Please go easy on him, Hero. <laughs> we, we haven't met Hero yet. Oof. Sorry, Kel. Better luck next time. Kel is still feeling a little sour about losing to Hero in an arm wrestling, uh, or arm wrestling last night, so Hero decided to lean in for a smooch. Kel looks so annoyed. Ah, brotherly love. That's a cute picture. Me showing Sunny a book I've been reading. Mari stole my camera and took this when I wasn't paying attention. I should really keep better track of my things. 
Sunny still looks so sad all the time. It's all of us cuddling with Sunny stuffed animals. Oh, that's what they all are. They're Sunny stuffed animals. He has so many and they're all so soft. I wish I could just lay here forever. Oh, are these the same ones from the other place? Mari is teaching everyone how to make flower core or flower yeah, flower flower crowns. <laughs> Here's Sunny and Kel holding Mari's example. It looks perfect, doesn't it? If only Mari thought so too. Yeah, these are some of the same ones. Here is still making his flower crown. It's taking him a little while, but he's getting there. You have to admire his persistence. It's raining super hard today. The rain always seems to come out of nowhere during springtime. Are these... When we were chasing, like, the Shadow Basil, are these all of the memories? Because there was one with the umbrella. There's one with the violin. Is that what all of these are? Aubrey asked me to take a picture of her with her new raincoat. It's her favorite color, pink. <laughs> Aubrey won't let Cal under the umbrella, but Cal seems to be taking it just fine. He says he likes how the rain tastes. Cal just being Cal again. We went to Hobbies, but the shop owner told Cal to leave his jacket outside since Cal was getting all his comics wet. Sorry, shopkeep. It's been pretty busy with school lately, but we finally made time to get together and go to the park today. Here's Cal, hanging by his legs off a tree. He's such a good climber. I wish I was fearless as him. Yeah, and there's a watermelon one too. It's the first day of summer vacation, so we all wanted to celebrate by going to the beach. Watermelon is Aubrey's favorite. So it was Aubrey who was saying that watermelon was her favorite. Cal cooling off with some refreshing orange gel. <laughs> I shouldn't get too close or you might get my camera wet. Cal is known to spill his drinks. <laughs> I think this is my favorite. <laughs> just like the expression. And it's just Amori or Sunny. I mean, it's so cute. <laughs> we buried Sunny in the sand. It took forever, but he looks like he's enjoying himself. I wonder if he's going to need help getting out. I guess I'll keep him company until then. <sighs> These memories are so sad in the way that they're not... I feel like they're so in the past. They describe this group of friends that was so close and they're not anymore. And like, that's the sad part, right? The loss of friends and, and support that's not there anymore. That's a lot of candles. Yay, Sunny is turning 12 today. Even though me, Sunny, Aubrey, and Cal are in the same school year, Sunny is younger than all of us. He's the baby of the group, so we have to take care of him. That's a big box. Sunny holding a super big present from Mari and Hero. Mm, I wonder what it is. Is it a cat? You can't really tell from the photo, but Mari and Hero got Sunny a giant building block set. Oh, I was thinking it was a cat. So wait, does Sunny actually have the same black cat that we've been seeing in the white space? Sunny seems much more interested in the box though. Are you a cat? He acts like, just like Mari's new kitten. Mew, 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 Mew. Sunny won't leave the box, so Kel put a food bowl inside. <laughs> I guess the box will be Sunny and Mew's new home. We're going beetle catching today. Here's Kel ready to pounce on his next victim. Oh, and Sunny is there too. He looks kind of sleepy. This one was in there in the other world. We went to the bathroom and came back with, or I went to the bathroom and came back to this photo. Kel says he took a photo of himself on accident, but I don't believe him. It's the first day of school today. Me, Sunny, Cal, and Aubrey are up bright and early. Aubrey is so photogenic. Goodbye, Summer. Until next year. So is this all that... When Sunny is in the other world, is that what he's... Like, the time... Is that summer? Hmm. 
Hey, Basil. You have a cat on your roof. Knock, knock. Basil, it's your friends, Kel and Sunny. Oh, hello there. Who are you? Hi, Basil. Oh, wait, you're not Basil. Uh, I'm sorry. My name is Polly. Are you, like, Basil's caretaker? I was thinking, like, the nurse for Basil's grandmother. Is that who he said? Whoa, she slides in. Oh, hey, Kel. What is it? Hi, Basil. We got your photo album back. Uh, you did? Wow. Thank you. So, wait. I wonder if Basil did some of this on purpose. I wonder if Basil gave Aubrey the photo album. And then knowing that they did that, they told us to get it to try to get us to talk. Because we haven't talked for four years. Is this like a scheme? Like parent trap style level scheme? That would be almost nefarious. You gave Basil back his photo album. I think as a kid, you think of doing schemes like that, where it's like, oh, what would they say to this thing? And then I'll say this to this thing, but then it never actually plays out that way. Basil, you didn't tell me you had friends coming over. Would you like to join us for dinner? I always seem to cook just a little too much. Dinner? Sure, it sounds delicious. Come on, Sunny, free dinner. I mean, Sunny doesn't have anybody at home. So what, a microwave steak or, like, real dinner? I don't think that's a hard choice. Please make yourself at home. I'll go ahead and finish up the food. All the flowers inside, this cactus. Wow, it's been a while since I've been in here. This is definitely Basil's house. You definitely have a lot more plants than you used to. Ah, uh, yeah, I like them a lot. Actually, there's some that are still alive from when you guys came... From when you guys came here more often. Those are old plants. Wow, you sure are dedicated. Yep, that's Basil for you. Flowers and photos. F you just zoomed. Oh, that reminds me. Now that we got your photo album back, we can all go through the photos together. I, I just did that. Ah, oh, that's, uh, I don't know. We, I, <laughs> Basil, if you are afraid of us seeing it, I already went through them. <laughs> it's been a while since we've looked through them, hasn't it? <laughs> Not really. Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, sure. That sounds convincing, Basil. Okay. The last time we looked at this photo album, not so great things happened. I mean, like, the last time we did this, we all looked at them together. Here it is. I just, I just did this. Are you done Look. Yes. Oh, man. It looks like a lot of the photos are still missing. Maybe Aubrey kept them for herself. We'll have to get those back later. On the bright side, look how short I was. I know I've grown at least a foot since Hero left for college. I can't wait till he comes back. This year, I'll finally be the taller brother. <laughs> the look on his face. Anyway, don't sweat about the missing photos, Basil. Me and Sunny will take care of things for you. You just focus on getting back to your happy, carefree self. Was it happy, or is, like, the happiness covering up something? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try. <sighs> Sorry about the wait. Dinner is taking longer than I thought. Would any of you boys like to help? Yeah, sure. I'll help. I got some experience helping my brother cook and stuff. That's fairly true. Oh, that would be lovely. Please follow me. The kitchen is this way. She just zooms along. Hey, Basil. Actually, there's a place to save. This feels like a good place to stop. And there's a lot. There's so much that happened. The game starts off, first off, being very colorful and cute. It is still colorful and cute. And that part of the game is still colorful and cute. And then it changes... We have all this stuff with the white room. And it introduces this element of horror. Psychological horror. And we had that... Thing with Mari. I don't want to say that it was a vision. Because I'm not quite sure what it was. It 
kind of sounds like we'll find out. The game is slowly giving us more details, but we're learning all of this stuff to where... In the beginning, it was very cut and dry in the fact that everybody was having fun and everybody was a friend group and everybody in your party was a friend. And now we're at this place where there's no clear good guy or bad guy. And I really love stories like that because they feel more accurate. We don't purposely do things that say, I'm going to be the bad guy. We don't make choices like that. That's not, that's not how people want to look at themselves. We want to look at ourselves like we've made choices that are good. And so we make choices that we feel like are often, you know, the best ones, for lack of a better term, at the time. But would other people agree with us on that? Not all the time. And that difference in perspective is where conflicts come from. And this is more of how reality is versus movies and TV shows all, and all of that. And I like how the game is leaning into that idea where it comes to this is complicated. There is no clear right or wrong. And then we have Sunny who who has so much trauma. We don't know what happened with her sister. But it's like we're navigating through all of this. And it's interesting too because like Sunny would have actually known what, was hap what had happened in the past but we don't. Um, but uh, it's very complicated, and I like that in the sense that it's more realistic. But it also makes me feel really bad for all of these characters. Because you never want anybody to go through trauma. Can't everybody just be happy again? Jeez. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on how the game is going. We'll stop here, and I'll see you guys in the next video.